Welcome to FedScoop TV. I'm Camille Tutti. I'm the editorial director at FedScoop. I'm sitting here with John Robinson from Technica. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be can, here. can you talk a little bit about what are some of the trends that you see in open source? So, from a government perspective, I see um, a lot. Uh, the trend I'm going to start seeing over the next few years is, is more involvement. So, there'll be. I think what you're going to start seeing is. Um, uh, from an acquisition perspective, you'll see more ingestion of um, uh, preferences to use open source technology and the solutions that are being provided back. Um, kind of um, uh, not, not, not necessarily a hard requirement, but just basically um, preferential treatment to those uh, contractors who actually provide use open source technology. Um, and you're going to see government actually being more directly involved. Um, not only submission of um, code to the open source community, but actually uh, more actively participating uh, within the community themselves and some of the consortiums um, actually helping, uh, helping with roadmap strategies for open source uh, solutions. So. And what are some of the security challenges when it comes to incorporating open source? So, I don't see them as challenges. Um, I see them as opportunities. So with open source, uh, opportunities for education, uh, there seems to be uh, a stigmatism that open source is less secure. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, an open source software solution is nothing more than no, nothing different than a commercial software solution, a closed source. Um, the government still has to do its own risk assessment, its risk analysis to find out uh, if it's um, uh, appropriate for use within the federal government for, the, for a production system. You have to do that no matter what the software is, whether it's open source, whether it's closed source, um, or, or government um, developed. Even, even if you develop it within the government uh, organically, you still have to do the exact same risk assessment. And you're not immune to any security vulnerabilities just because you developed it inside the government confines. Um, so I don't see them as any additional challenges. I see them as opportunities to learn and overcome some of the, uh, the legacy stigmatism that open source is less secure because in the end it actually is more secure because you have a, um, what you call crowdsourcing, a lot more eyes are on the actual source code to actually fix problems than you do in closed source communities. How do you see that the government is uh, using open source differently compared to the private sector? So I don't, um, not quite sure they use them differently, but they approach uh, the acquisition of open source differently. So in the commercial world uh, or the, the private sector, um, the open source technology is used for its low price point, of course, it's free. Um, it's, it's low cost, uh, no royalties are paid back to a, to a vendor. And uh, the, the, tech, the, the skills to actually implement and sustain and maintain that code is done organically. They have the skills in-house. Um, with the government, they, they don't have that organic skill set, um, so they have to contract it out. Uh, so basically what the, the difference is, is in the government world, they have, to, they have to account and have to have a method to sustain that code at open source. So they have to find organizations um, like Red Hat um, or TenGen that are actually going to take uh, responsibility and accountability for sustaining and making sure that code is, is um, patched correctly and up to date. Uh, so the government actually requires that. It's actually in acquisition language. Um, com private sector, they don't, they don't require this. So they're actually a lot more nimble. Um, and they're actually able to keep that cost down because they can use organic resources. So those are the, the differences I see. And you touched uh, on this earlier. How do you see open source use evolve um, over the long, uh, long term? Yeah, so I, I do think there's going to be a lot more involvement uh, engagement of federal government uh, in, in the uh, actual development uh, in the community of open source technologies. You're going to see a lot more usage of it. You're going to see a lot more language and contracts and uh, to actually uh, um, favor open source technologies, uh, especially with the fiscal climate the way it is in, in the government today. Uh, they're looking for lower price points and the only way you can lower that price point is start adopting more open source technology. JR, thanks so much for speaking with FedScoop TV. We appreciate it. Thank you.